morning to you all. Good afternoon. Uh, at this stage, my presentation about Nepal. Have you ever been to Nepal? David is there. Okay, let me tell you uh, Nepal in the brave way. So this is the business of life. Uh, let me uh, make a brief description about, uh, about Nepal. Uh, this is a big, small country lying between two giants, India and China. Uh, it has the largest civilization of gradients, from the land to the uh, uh, highest summit in the world, at the top of the country of Mount Everest. Uh, so it has three disparate regional regions, like the land to arrive, Mid-Hills and Highland Mountains. Uh, if, you can, if you see over here, uh, so the northern part of the Nepal, they are least accessible, uh, but it is low that the Nepal attached to the area, that they are relatively accessible. Uh, as I said, the, most of the flat land, the road area, they are accessible, and they are fertile, and they are cultivated. Uh, most of the uh, country's economy is based on the Bolet Harai. However, the contribution from hill and mountain is also uh, over the industrial uh, 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 part, uh, like uh, uh, they contribute enough to producing medicinal plants or something like that. So, uh, most of the hills and mountains, they, are, they have a particular sparse settlement. A contiguous forest or steep terrain, and then they have limited accessibility. Uh, if we go through the uh, whole country, it's figure around 20% land is agriculture, however, only 50 to 20% is arable. So, and then most of the cover is um, uh, made by forest and followed by snow cover or barren land. So, most uh, around two thirds of the population they are living with the poverty or uh, low economic conditions. Uh, so most of the people, they do adopt the traditional value strategies to uh, cope with the situations like uh, the knowledge benefits of summer grazing, uh, collection of fabric, of plants from Himalaya, and then a trade to the lowland of Chennai. So whenever and whenever humans appear, they start using the forest and plants for the livestock and livelihood. That's why they influence the forest of the area. Uh, and for the high water utilized and deeper to the space, deeper to the culture, and deeper to the time. Uh, as being so a small country, we have a great number of variations in the culture. We have 125 caste ethnic groups, 123 languages. Among them, 59 are indigenous. Indigenous people, they, they do live near to the forest, and their livelihood is depending on forest resources. So they are knowledgeable on forest management. Uh, uh, here I can define the indigenous system as that one uh, which has evolved within a country without input from the uh, without input from the outsiders. So it is a list of indigenous communities and their livelihood uh, forest management practices. The Chepang, they, uh, they, they do hunting and gathering and they do slats and board and they still live close to the forest. Uh, Routy, this is semi nomadic, still they do live in slight forest and they still uh, carry out um, carry on hunting and gathering. Sherpa, uh, uh, you almost know about Sherpa, they are mountainous people, they do have a uh, frequent, uh, they do have vast knowledge of mountaineering and they do, uh, they do transhumanity and animal as badly. Among our religious group, they are all early forest dwellers. They are craftsmen, they are miners, and they rear fields for the living world. Brahmin and Chetri, they are related to the light group, then all other groups. Uh, they do, uh, they do, uh, they do uh, agriculture, summer grazing, rear goats, and cows for their uh, subsistence. Uh, so, the culture and cultivation can be, on, uh, can be integrated once understanding the complexity of race, people, plant and the knowledge of history class and history. In this context, uh, even the CBD has recognized that the virus to not be conserved without understanding how humans interact with natural environment. 
So in this first trade, we do assess the indigenous forest management practices and the role in the do the forest categories. So this is a little bit about our study area. Our study area lies, uh, uh, this is close to the light in the, uh, the border of India and China. This is the transnational transboundary landscape. It has hot and semi arid plants in Malay by climate. Uh, northern part in China and southern part is Nepal and India. This is about the Kailas Kail second landscape. 40% of the area is logged, uh, covered by snow, and 24% 20, is forest. One day, let's say over three years here, only less than 10% land is cultivated. Uh, this area, let's see over there, uh, this is the site for this site for famous for pilgrimages. Uh, this is the destination for pilgrims, uh, millions of pilgrims, uh, people access this site for, uh, to see to have a holy bath. There are two sacred lakes to have a holy bath over here and to see this uh, holy Kailas mount over here. So, uh, to, access to, have, to have a holy bath and to see the mount Kailas, there are three pilgrims uh, routes. Um, most, uh, almost the all three from our study site, straight districts. Um, the, the third one this is from Jaxula, this is the Limbo Lake. This is one of the two medieval routes access to the Seventh Uh So, uh, in this way, the Kailas is geopolitically and uh, culturally and ecologically important. Uh, the study site, as I said, uh, we, have, we will have four study. Uh, districts, uh, the study sites, Teltura, uh, Vekani, and Jachula. Uh, 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 you can see over here, uh, this, this is the area in China, and these three, Teltura, uh, Vekani, and Jachula, they are adjacent to India, and, then, and this is the Humla, the Bajam, which are right in China. Vekani uh, and Jachula, they are originally uh, known for growing amaranth. And as you can see over there, uh, and then it's part of the relic hem culture. Uh, this is the area, it's the abandoned area, it's still the hem is going on over there. Uh, in 1973, government banned cropping the hem, and this transformed the socioeconomic status of the people and led people to pursue the different kind of economic conditions, uh, the, uh, different opportunities. Uh, in the remote part of the, this district, Kalindura and Jashula, there are uh, Rauti and Biasi, as I said, they are semi nomadic people, private people, um, maintained in the rural nomadic context and policy. So, this is the study methods, the semi structured view in internal metrics and inclusive inventory. Uh, data collection process was a primary and informed principle obtained from FAO, the nominees, and then uh, uh, and then it seems like a forest office and wildlife offices. Fair rules and analysis were analysis the following and she went on. Uh, it is a steep value road. Dead to the right, then whether they are real districts and they are sedentary farmers and villagers that they are um, uh, they do have agriculture, waste labor, agriculture, medicinal plant collection, <coughs> and transmitting a measure of patients. Uh, Route is semi nomadic in Debra and that's what I've always done this by collecting new matter. Uh, collecting forest products and parting the other products to the Adolent. Uh, in case of the mountainous district like Jatula and Bajan, Biasi, Biasi and Biasi, they are semi nomadic and they live throughout India, Nepal, and China part. And they do pasture management, municipal plant collection and trade. Uh, this is the Syria, this area. They do have to have camping to collect the, uh, this is this camera from the old of your biceps. Uh, the, we would, uh, in case of the forest management system, out of nine, uh, we have reported four uh, forest management systems over there, nomadic, semi-nomadic, and then variation uh, of sacred sites, uh, this sacred sites and summer grazing. And the rest, uh, this all of the five systems are uh, reported from all other parts of Nepal. Uh, this is the site where the uh, this is the site where the religious site where the people are preserving forest for their 
uh, for biological innovation and the further ritual practice. Uh, uh, once the dismantling of forest landscape survey and that of pasture in 1974, it made contact between community and government that led a that led a uh, that led a massive deforestation and sorts of livelihood. However, the, some the, there were some indigenous forest landing practices were on uh, in our state area, like uh, in here uh, some bass bass area and Kota area, where there that was area there are some indigenous forest land practices were on and they helped to address the deforestation at that time. And these were the practices similar to introducing community forestry in the area. And community forestry is a, is a management set from protection to the conservation. Uh, out of this uh, eight men residing in the country, uh, we have uh, we have reported six men residing from our area: uh, community forest, protected forest, leasehold forest, uh, community uh, leasehold forest for poor people, uh, protected forest for biological conservation and livelihood, religious forest and private forest. Uh, since urban sprawl is on microsonized uh, in the country, the urban forest is kept in situs by the government. Forest cover chains, uh, both in Nepal and in our study area, we have, a, we have found erratic forest cover chains, and then this non-linear chains may be because of anthropogenic and then conservation management. Uh, loss due to human migration, migration, over exploitation and the land, land unattended. And then the increment was because of the uh, large number of establishment of the conservation areas in the area, as well as the century long price of our indigenous forest management systems. Conclusions uh, there are a number of semi nomadic transhumanist and semi indigenous groups uh, contributing to the management of forest for centuries. Uh, because of the inevitable changes in climate, uh, they are unavoidable un 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 changes. Uh, climate change, social culture change, land change, forest diversity and expected to accelerate. In this context, we are as government and this community to manage measures to incorporate broad components like socio-economic change, climate change, land change, or development, migration, organization, or indigenous and traditional and scientific uh, man knowledge management, and the ethical approach for sustainable balance. So these are the selected references we use for this study. And I would like to acknowledge uh, my friends, families, and big birds friends, and the FAU Prayer Bank in the city, and the Fort Foundation in the UK, the Central Graphic, the Visual Important Garden, and my institution, and current my institution in the Ubersoy Gathering Hall. And thank you for paying attention.